thanks everyone for the opportunity to speak with you all today. Um, what we're going to do today is talk about App Studio and we're going to talk about it in the context of how can you take um, an app to market and how can you do it uh, using a, a set of tools that you may already be using um, in your existing day-to-day -day work. Um, what we're going to cover is um, some basics around how the system works. We're going to cover how you can use tools like InDesign and Quark Express to then be able to create content that can be distributed into applications. We're going to show you how that content can be managed within um, our uh, web-based management console. And then we'll also show you the end results of some of the um, content that's already been produced using App Studio um, via an iPad so that you can get a feel for the end results uh, and how that's all pulled together. So to kick off, um, really App Studio as a product um, is able to take content from multiple sources. Um, and that's one of the key things about App Studio is that really it's a very open, non-proprietary um, system. Uh, and uh, you know, for a product that's part of the Quark team, I guess the best evidence of that is that InDesign is a um, is a key component in being able to create content and send it to App Studio. But outside of the two things I'll show you today in regards to InDesign and Quark Express. What I'm also going to um, not show you, but for your knowledge, um, in case you want to explore this a little further, you can also do things within HTML5 if you want to extend content beyond things that are available through desktop publishing tools. And also you can automate some content processes through XML into App Studio. And, and those are subjects for another day, but it's something just worth po uh, pointing out. Um, there's a whole management aspect to what you do once you've created content, which we'll show you, and that's key to being able to ensure that you can present new content to your um, readership or customers in a timely manner and have full control over that through the various app stores that are available. And then there's the ability to publish it and to do that on various different platforms. Obviously, iOS um, is still very successful today and um, has a very broad user base, but Android is more and more with devices like the Nexus 7 um, making inroads into the market and you know we're seeing things with uh, devices like the Kindle Fire that are becoming more and more relevant. So um, we support all of those various platforms and um, we'll, while we'll broadly be talking and demonstrating on the iPad today, it's, it's worth uh, bearing in mind that uh, the whole concept of the publishing process through App Studio is to be able to take your content to those different device types so that you have um, effectively a potential to write once and render across lots of different operating systems and platforms and app stores. The, the way that content is created in a desktop publishing environment is, is really a three-step process. So it's creating your content in whichever tool you're familiar with, using a few rules and a few guidelines that we provide you with. It's then uploading that content to the uh, web-based management service, the cloud. Um, and that really is where all of the content is then transformed and compiled into something that can be read on the device. And then the publishing process of, of actually then making that available to the end user in your own branded application. So it's very important to think of App Studio as um, some rules around how you create content the ability to manage content and then delivering that content into your own branded application across many different platforms. And so you, you'll get a better feel for that as we walk through and we'll demonstrate that to you shortly. Um, before we dive into that demonstration, just a couple more slides on um, some reasons why you may want to choose App Studio. There are a number of different methods by which you can take content to market on devices. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit more in depth about that in a, in, a, in, a, in a moment. But one of the reasons, I guess, our customers tend to choose us is, I guess, our um, history of working with a number of different publishers and, and, um, and uh, agencies. Uh, and so it's definitely a solution that's been out there for, um, for, for a while. We were very early to market with this product. Um, another big reason is HTML5, which we'll talk about again in a second. But... Um, uh, most people understand that HTML5 is the way that uh, um, a lot of this content creation is going. Um, it's uh, very portable as a description of 
uh, a page, which means it supports multiple devices and ultimately web access as well if required. Um, it has many other advantages around things like small file sizes and being able to share and, and so on. Ultimately also our integration with the tool sets I've already mentioned mean that it's easier to use and people can generally pick up and run um, with App Studio very, very quickly. And um, there are a couple of other key things which we'll touch on uh, around some benefits to HTML, things like the fact that real text is rendered in the application so it's searchable and offers all those kind of digital things that um, your end user will expect on a touchscreen device. Uh, so those are a few of the reasons. Um, I think really from a high level, I mentioned the openness of the software. That's not only evident in the tools and ways you can get content in, but also because that content is stored in a non-proprietary format in HTML5, it means that even if you choose to develop something in App Studio and then move on to do something else in the future, that content's in a kind of readable format that you can take with you. And a lot of our um, active customers take uh, a lot of heed from that and, and uh, are happy to know that uh, from, a, from a future point of view there's an ability to work with content. Um, there are various different ways that uh, existing apps today um, render content in, in uh, the various applications that are on the market. Um, that could be as simple as PDF or um, a flat file image or uh, as complex as a full custom app that's doing something very um, proprietary and um, hard-coded. Uh, we selected HTML5 really early on because we um, uh, started developing for mobile devices many years ago and, and realized that while the iPad was going to be successful, it was also going to lead to a lot of device diversity. And the only way to really handle that is to um, is to not design content around one particular um, device or one screen size. So we knew that uh, portability was going to be really important moving forward, um, as well as all the openness that I've already talked about. And there's some really great benefits to HTML5. And if you've ever opened a um, publication on an iPad, I'm sure you've had varying different um, degrees of good or bad experiences around how that works. At its best, um, it can be you know, very accessible and searchable. You can highlight text. The download time isn't very uh, long, so it's easy to download and there's no um, bad user experience around that. Um, at, at its worst, it's kind of a flat image file which you kind of squint to read the text. Um, you try to zoom in or maybe you're pinching to zoom in, zoom in around columns so you can read the text. And um, the reason we cho chose HTML5 is because there is an ability to render things a little more effectively um, because there is the ability to have real text that can be searched and highlighted and cut and pasted and all the things that people expect to do um, and has a, a consequence of sm small file sizes. And one of the real benefits to that um, is when the uh, uh, Retina display was launched on the iPad so if you take uh, other um, types of platforms that maybe produce a very large flat image file of text that's displayed on the screen, when the Retina file, when the Retina um, screen was launched, effectively to display that text in Retina format, you'd have to increase the dots per inch of the file that you were rendering. Whereas because we're using native text on the device, instantly all of our fonts were rendered in Retina um, uh, capable uh, fonts, and and it meant that the uh, end product was really punchy, looked really good, and, and there was no file size uh, increase. So, so instantly it became um, Retina compatible and, and our customers immediately benef benefited from that. And the user benefited by not having to download a, a larger file size. So it's a really important thing for the future. Just briefly in terms of the application that you generate through the App Studio um, product, the um, the way that we've designed that is really to be um, and to be leveraging HTML5 quite significantly, and it it has a number of really good um, after effects. Which is that, for instance, we were able to go to market on different platforms very quickly because we're not wholly reliant on native code within the application. 
we just leverage that where it's appropriate to make sure that the end product renders and feels like a native app, but even though the uh, content is actually HTML5. Whereas you look at a lot of the competitive apps that are out there and uh, or products that are out there, and they really are more focused on driving it from native coding, Objective-C in the case of iPad, and, and then really just using a little bit of HTML5 in terms of widgets on the page where they can, a little bit of interactivity, um, and heavily reliant on rasterized images for the way that they render pages. We think we've got the balance right. I'll, I'll let you guys be the judge for yourselves. And um, as I demonstrate apps to you later, obviously this is via uh, uh, WebEx, but um, feel free to download some of our applications, everything I'll show you today there is either free or has a free issue that you can try out and, and get a feel for the end product yourself. Importantly, I guess this whole thing is when you're actually designing content, what, what is it you can do that is going to make it different to a, a just flat page layout? And that really is about interactivity and leveraging all the things that users expect on a touchscreen device. So this slide just um, gives you a few of the things that you are able to do using App Studio. We, um, we, we're always innovating and adding new features. Um, I'll demonstrate some of them to you in a moment. Um, but I guess one of the things I want to get across is that um, our objective in developing App Studio has always been that you as sort of cre the creative community never really have to worry about Objective-C or Java. Um, you should always be able to do really exciting things just using the tools you know. And worst case, if you can't quite create something in um, a desktop publishing environment that you're familiar with, maybe drop into HTML5. But um, and, and of course, because of course, there are lots of people with those skills that are out there, whereas there are very few people who know Objective C. I'm sure on this call, and I'm sure in general. So. It basically, what we're trying to do is give you an environment where you should be able to do much of what you want to do, if not everything, within an environment you're familiar with. But worst case, there is the opportunity to use HTML5 to do some really exciting, innovative things as well. And we create the environment that allows you to do that. Um, and then just finally, I want to just use this uh, as a quick slide, because as you're looking at perhaps your first app, or maybe your second app, taking it to market, why, um, why we differ from other solutions that are out there. This particular, um, uh, I guess, graph, which is a bit technical, um, <laughs> talks about the user experience across the horizontal and the effort that's involved in creating something. And if you look at the polar extremes of what you can do, on one end, you could just generate a PDF document, right? It's, it's not going to be interactive, but you can deploy that on an iPad. But it's going to be a very basic user experience, but the effort is low. On the other end of things, you could decide to spec out a full custom app employ a developer and do something really amazing and unique but of course that's high effort and and may end up in a great user experience but um, we've noticed that a, n a number of uh, companies we work with haven't had experience of developing apps and sometimes it doesn't turn out quite the way they want with our tools we feel like uh, app studio lets you create great user experiences and then lets you decide the amount of effort that you want to put into creating something so with that i'm going to um, start uh, showing you how these things work from uh, a demonstration point of view and what I'm going to do is uh, show you briefly some ways that documents are created and how interactive elements are created within InDesign. I'm going to briefly show you how that's done in Quark Express also to show you the similarities. I'm then going to show you how that's published out to the cloud and how you can manage that through our web interface. It went web interface I should say and then how you can publish those things out to your um, own branded application and what that looks like as an end product. So with that, what I'm going to do is um, come out of the PowerPoint presentation and I'm just going to quickly go into InDesign. So um, hopefully my screen is uh, not too far behind and you are all looking at an InDesign document right now. I'm currently using InDesign CS6 and I'm using the digital publishing workspace, which is um, which includes a number of the core menu and um, palettes that are available within CS6 that you can work from. Um, it's kind of a nice way to get started if you um, if you're kind of new to this, and it just sets up your um, your your desktop in a way that makes it easy to work. You'll notice the only thing that we've added to 
um, everything within InDesign is one small plugin, which is called the Exporter. And I'll touch on that in a moment, but everything else I'm going to be doing is just using standard features that are already built into InDesign. So there are no new things to learn, really, as long as you understand uh, and use InDesign, as I'm sure you do on a daily basis, you should be able to pick up how App Studio works. Um, there are a couple of ways that we've um, mandated you need to lay your document out in, in order that we can work with it. So these are uh, a number of conventions that we um, really have put out there that if you follow, when we get your InDesign document, we are able to then interpret what you're trying to do from an interactivity point of view and, um, and then we'll be able to render that really nicely on the device. So I'll run through a few of those and you'll see that it's basically using uh, naming of layers and object states uh, as a way to be able to do that. But first off, I'm just going to touch quickly on um, a few things um, that are more high level. First thing is that you'll notice that all of the text um, within this document is just rendered within text boxes and um, text that is placed within text boxes um, can then be rendered as real text within the um, application itself. And from a creative point of view, most designers will ask me immediately, well, what about um, custom fonts, fonts that are not available on the device? Um, as long as you has the, have the distribution rights to those fonts, those will get packaged up with a file. And um, I will demonstrate to you um, the My Ford app shortly, and that uses the Ford antenna font. Uh, and that is used within the InDesign document, packaged up, and then renders that antenna font natively um, in, inside the application once it goes uh, and it gets published to the application. So you, you can see here that um, I'm just using native text. If I load up my layers palette, there is one layer which is called background. And the background layer, anything that is placed on the background layer is effectively um, rasterized so that you do have an opportunity if you don't want or if you don't have the rights to a particular font you can just place them on the background layer it'll become rasterized and then you can still get the same creative look or feel um, without having to worry about that obviously that's not real text and won't be searchable but or, or selectable but um, but sometimes you do need to make uh, make some compromises around those things and we give you the option to do that um, so in terms of the document, um, I'll just demonstrate a couple of very um, basic uh, interactive elements so you get an idea of how those are done. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, scroll down to my page. And this document, by the way, is the um, uh, brief high-level guide to how you do things within InDesign, which is available in the App Studio app from the App Store. And it was obviously created um, within um, InDesign so that you can, you can get a good feel for it. So if you download that app, you'll be able to play around with this and I can show you that in a moment as well. So uh, in this case what we're going to try and do is show how you how to create a pop-up box. It's a very commonly used interactive element on a page and the way that that works within App Studio is you can create a button on your page or, and that can be text or a graphic. In this case I'm just going to select the um, I'm going to select the graphic and then that graphic just is effectively a button within InDesign and then that button has a URL, which is a convention we mandate, which is layer colon slash slash pop up one. So what that's basically saying is, um, for for this pop up, um, when this button is pressed, we want to expose the layer pop up one. And if I just go to my layers menu, uh, layer pop up one is turned off right now, just to um, aid with this. But if I make pop up one visible, that's my layer that would appear when that button is pressed. The con again, the convention within App Studio is that any layer that has the name pop-up at the beginning of it um, is hidden by default so that um, this effect can be achieved pretty, pretty easily. So that's like a basic idea and then the close button does the reverse. So you hit it and then it hides the layer. And, and that's a very simple way to be able to create a pop-up and I'll show you that working in a second. Maybe a little bit more complex would be something like a slideshow. So let me uh, show you that and how that works. So um, in this particular example, um, we have a very simple and the most simplest way to create a slideshow is to create an object state. And inside that object state are the different images that you want to use within your slideshow. And um, by default, if you create that object state and give it the name slideshow, when we receive the file, 
our system will then be able to interpret that as a swipeable slideshow that you can um, control. There are, there are lots of additional things you can do, but, and, but these are some of the very basic ideas and principles behind which you can create interactivity. So in this case, three images can be uploaded, given the name slideshow as an object state, and then when that is viewable on the device, you'll be able to swipe across those images um, with your finger, which is great. And I'll, I'll just show you one more slightly complex thing, which you'll see in a, some of the examples on the device I'll show you in a moment, and that is uh, page flip. So page flip is the concept of a page that you're looking at within your app can actually have a backside to it. And so when you hit the flip, it'll actually give a flip animation and then you'll see something on the back. There's a, a food magazine I'll, I'll show you in a moment that uses that really effectively as a way of showing an image of the recipe and then having a recipe card on the backside of that page. It's kind of a nice um, interactive technique to be able to um, get information across in a, in a nice visual way. So um, the way that page flip works, effectively a little like a pop-up, you create a button and that button has the um, URL of flip colon slash slash card, which is another um, another uh, thing that we've uh, mandated as, as a way to describe this. And when you hit that flip card, what that effectively is suggesting to our system is that it needs and expects a layer. And the layers are front face and back face. So on a particular page, if you prefix the layer name with the word front face or back face, front face appears by default and back face will appear when the button is hit. So if I hide my front face elements and then show you my back face elements, that's what would happen when that button is hit and then you'll get the animation by default and it all comes together quite nicely. So there are many more um, elements to that you can add to your document that aid with interactivity. Um, I'm always stunned by some of the things we develop and then you put them in the hands of creative people and then they use them in more alternative and unique ways. Um, a really good example is we have a, a 360 image which was designed to be a really great way for a product to be shown off. Um, it just uses object states. And um, what happens is when that image loads, it spins around because it's using the different frames to enable you to do that. And then you can use your finger to then you know, uh, control the spin so you can focus on a particular area of the product. Now we've seen people create stop motion movies with this functionality. Um, the object name is Image360, but um, you know it, it, it's been taken and used well beyond what we originally thought it could be used for. So for me personally, it's pretty exciting to see um, the various elements of interactivity we've added and then how they can be used creatively. Um, I'll talk more about this in a moment, but um, if you actually go to docs.appstudio.net, there is um, a full user tutorial help file and example files that you can download and they will give you lots of additional information about things that you can do. So that at a, at a very basic level is what you can do with InDesign. Uh, obviously we have a lot to cover though so I'm going to move on and just briefly show you some of the same functionality within Quark Express. Um, so I've just loaded up a, a Quark Express document um, within Quark Express 9.5, there's a new HTML5 panel that's been introduced. And uh, that's where you can control the same kind of interactive elements. Um, so demonstrating to you again the, um, the pop-up, um, if I select this particular element on my page, which is going to become the button for the pop-up, it actually has an action of show pop-up. And then um, rather than using layers, it uses Quark Express layouts. So in this case, it's using the layout pop-up, which you can see at the top of the screen here is this tab. And that's what's going to appear on the screen um, when that is selected. So a very similar kind of use case, but um, something that is just as easy to do within Quark Express. I'll show you one other one quickly, and that might be how you could include video and audio. This obviously can be done within InDesign as well, but um, in this case, uh, if I select the video that I've put on the screen, in this case I've embedded something directly from my desktop, I could also include a URL or directly embed YouTube or video, Vimeo videos into my app. Works really well. Um, the same thing with, uh, with music, so you can actually play sound files and you can embed MP3 files that can be played in the background as well. So 
um, all works out, works out in exactly the same way, some slight different language in terms of the way that uh, we use um, layers in, in, uh, in InDesign and, and, and how that's represented within Quark Express, but um, fundamentally achieves the same goal. Um, and, and that's basically how that all fits together within Quark Express. So let me um, now take you through to what happens next. And let me just dive back into InDesign quickly to show you how you get your content you're creating up to the App Studio server and how it all gets formatted. So uh, within InDesign, we have a um, exporter plugin. That's the only plugin that you need to add in order to be able to use App Studio. And effectively, all this is really doing is taking the hassle out of um, exporting and uploading something to a server. So rather than make you do an export and FTP your files up somewhere, um, we've created this plugin to make it a lot more efficient. And it's efficient in a couple of ways. Um, first of all, it's within InDesign, so you don't have to leave InDesign. And secondly, it's an incremental upload, meaning the, the first time you may upload a document, Obviously, documents can be quite large, and it can take um, sometimes can take some time depending on your bandwidth. If you make small, minor changes to copy uh, within your document and so on, it actually will only upload any differences in the files as opposed to re-upload the whole thing from scratch. So it saves you some time, and we see designers using this um, in the field where you know they're doing little incre incremental changes as things get closer to launch, and it's very handy to be able to just upload recompile and then see it in the web interface very quickly and I'll show you how that works in a moment. Um, same facilities available out of Quark Express um, and again just uh, aids what you're doing. And just by way of uh, explanation, what, what we're actually doing with InDesign documents is we're, um, we're exporting the IDML representation of the file and that's what's basically going up to the server and then getting converted um, and I'll show you how that works right now. So in order to be able to use App Studio, and we'll talk about how you can get a free demo uh, in a moment, uh, you basically can log into myappstudio.com with an account. And uh, this account uh, is just set up using your uh, own email address. And you obviously set up a password. It allows you to log in. and. Upon logging in, what, what this is basically going to do is going to allow you to control everything that you're doing in terms of publishing your content. Um, there are a couple of things that um, are probably good to explain from a high level. As a user, you belong to an organization, and an organization can have more than one publication. And typically, publications are represented by apps. And so you may, in this case, there's the Good Food publication. But as a publisher, I may also have a car magazine car and driver may be a, a separate publication. So the organization, in this case, it's BBC magazines, may have multiple publications. Each publication can have multiple issues. And, and then within those issues, you can actually divide up your um, InDesign file into features or individual pages, however you like to work. And those get uploaded into the issue. So it's organization, publication, issue, and content. Best ways to think about that. So just logging into this interface, um, I've gone straight through to this Good Food magazine mm -hmm. as an example. Um, what you're looking at is uh, the publication Good Food and then all of the issues that have been published or are in the process of being worked on for that particular publication. Um, what I'm going to do is, uh, is I'm going to take you through one of those issues so you can see how it works. Um, first of all, um, there are a couple of other settings that are available through this interface that help you manage how things uh, are run and how you get your content to the App Store. So the outside of issues, the next thing would be App Manager. Now this is where you're actually able to submit your request for your application, your brand application to be built. Uh, and obviously this supports the different types of um, devices that we previously talked about. Uh, and through this area, you would submit a build form and then uh, we would send you a link back to your built application that you could then distribute. There are a number of things that you need to consider before you go and do that. Um, things like, you know, do you have for iOS an Apple developer account? You're going to need those credentials and you're going to need to have all that set up in order for you to be able to create your build file. 
Um, again, within the documentation, there are a number of tips and uh, a bullet list of things that you need to be able to do that, and they're worth getting um, organized early on if you're anticipating building an application because things like Apple developer accounts can take a couple of weeks to submit and um, be approved. You can manage your whole user base within your organization through this interface. So by clicking on users, um, you can not only add users, but you can select the role and the amount of privileges that they have. Um, there are a number of settings that you can um, you can alter and, and play around with. Um, the one I'm going to talk about mostly um, is the sections area. Um, as you create features for a typical magazine type publication, those features may want to be um, categorized into sections. And the sections that you, you uh, create and label and color here uh, are reflected in the end app, which you'll see in a moment as well. So um, this is a really interesting area to enable your navigation of your content within the application to be a little more straightforward for end users. Uh, and then the billing section is just really all about um, the kind of package that you're subscribed to for App Studio. So going back to the issue screen, let's kind of uh, imagine we've created some content for uh, within InDesign and we've uploaded it. And I'm going to go to um, a previous issue of Good Food. I'm going to hit the View button. And what that's going to do is it's loading up effectively what is a flat plan of the magazine. You're seeing the sections that I was just describing that are color labeled uh, across for each feature. As new content is uploaded from InDesign, you have the opportunity to um, to add it. Um, you can you can add, um, you can basically add the content. It's available to you, and and then it adds it into the flat plan, and you can organize it however you want. This is a modern web interface, so you know it's drag and drop, which allows you to be able to reorder pages, reorder features, and really just kind of get a feel for how you want to put your content together. Um, now, the, one of the great benefits of the fact that fundamentally all of the content is generated in HTML5 is that you can also preview your content. Um, I should mention that the way that we do HTML5 today is WebKit based. So when you're previewing it, although most modern web browsers will allow you to do everything that you're seeing me do today, WebKit based, based browsers will do it a little more efficiently and give you a more accurate view of what it's going to look like on a device like an iPad. Um, but the way you can do that is just hit the preview button and the preview button will effectively take me through to um, uh, an, another area where I can see all of my content building out and there will be a full screen representation of that content. So I'm going to select a page and hopefully in a moment you'll see the HTML5 rendition of that page appear in my browser. It's a little slow with the WebEx. Um, my connection's a little under strain right now, but hopefully what you're looking at is a chicken with mushrooms recipe. And this was what I was talking about earlier for this particular publication where they do a nice full image of the um, recipe. And then they use the page flip func functionality I uh, demonstrated earlier on as a mechanism to then allow you to see the recipe card on the back. Um, this is all real text and you get a really good feel for the layout and how it's working. You can flip between portrait and landscape, uh, et cetera. So that's kind of like a nice um, way to get a good feel for how your um, content is coming along. And we see a lot of designers working in InDesign, making changes, using the plugin to upload those changes, recomp recompiling this and then viewing it in the browser is a really quick way to be able to check and test for things. So that's effectively how that works. Um, if I go back, the next thing you might want to do is um, test your content before you publish it out to your own branded application. And there's a test button here, and what that will do is compile all of the content and make it available on our test server for download into the App Studio um, application, which is a free download from um, from the different uh, application stores. And what that lets you do is log in using the same credentials you log into this web interface into that application and then um, it will expose any of your own publications or issues that you've pushed to test so you can actually play with them on the device. It's a really good feature because I don't think anybody really wants to go ahead and 
actually make anything public before giving it a really thorough test on the device, making sure everything uh, renders nicely and does everything that you expect it to do. So you're able to not just preview, but then also test and then view things on the device. Finally, um, if we go back again to an, the previous page, this is where you also manage the publishing. So hitting this publish button here will allow us to push the bundle that is the issue onto our production server and then that issue becomes available to your branded application to anybody out in the field that may have your application installed and then they'll be able to download that issue into their, into their app. So this is really intended to be able to allow you to manage the whole end-to-end -end process um, and, and really simplify the whole process of taking content um, from InDesign right the way through to making it available within the app. Um, what I haven't really touched on because we are limited in terms of time today is how everything is also integrated into the various app stores from a billing point of view. I'll, we, we can show you briefly within the app how that works, but um, through this interface you can manage the various charging mechanisms that you want to use as well. Um, so it really becomes uh, um, a nice way to manage uh, not just the content, but how you charge for it, subscriptions, all those kinds of things, um, and uh, helps you just get a handle on being able to publish out. So um, that's kind of the management platform. There's a lot more to it, but uh, again, just to kind of stick with our time, I just want to demonstrate to you a couple of applications that um, have used the technology so you can get a good feel for how, um, how the end result is rendered within an application. So I'm going to share my iPad screen. What may happen with this is because this is done using um, AirPlay over Wi-Fi, is, um, my screen may end up being um, a few seconds behind, so I apologize if that happens. Um, I'm going to show you three apps, but first I want to show you the App Studio app. This is where you can test your content. It's a free download. It actually contains a couple of the demo files that I was working on earlier on, so you can play with them and you can um, see the interactivity working and then um, s compare that to the InDesign file or the Quark Express file that I just showed you. Um, in terms of logging in, that's done through the change publication uh, button at the top of the issue screen and there you log in with the same credentials you use for the web interface and then when you use that test button I mentioned, any issues that you've pushed to test will be available to download through this screen and then you can view them. But if I just view the, uh, the InDesign version of this, um, I can scroll through and um, I will show you the pop-up uh, that we were demonstrating earlier on. So I'm just navigating to the pop-up screen and then you see the same layout as you saw earlier on and then I'm going to hit the button and then the pop-up window opens. I can close it again and it vanishes. And before I move on, in terms of the application that you can build for yourself, your own branded application, by default, the features that are enabled in the app are what you're seeing within this application. So there's a scrubber bar that is a nice way to navigate around the various pages. Um, the issues screen, which takes you to where um, issues of content are available to download. Um, there are a couple of other elements at the top of the screen. Um, in the top right-hand corner, I'll talk through them from left to right. Um, the first one which is grayed out is the social sharing ability to um, use Twitter or Facebook or email to be able to share content. Podcast capability if you want to play audio in the background. There's the search capability which searches the text within pages as well as metadata and there's a whole bookmarking facility which is included. And then the final icon is help. The other thing that is available is the contents button on the left hand side that shows you the contents of the issue which is a little different to the bottom scrubber bar I just showed you and can also be accessed by pinching on the page. In this case we have one feature but if you had multiple features of content with, within your issue then they would be listed within that contents page. Uh, and that's the App Studio app. Definitely encourage you to download that and play with it and get a feel for what's achievable. Um, but let's show you some real world applications. So first of all I'm going to show you the, um, the food magazine that we've been um, working through today. Uh, so uh, the first thing I'll talk about is briefly billing. Um, obviously it's very key for a lot of people unless you're doing a very marketing driven application you're going to want to make money out of um, potentially selling issues of content. 
we support subscriptions, single app purchase, um, sorry, single issue purchasing, which is done within the application. Um, and you can see here, you can subscribe on the top left hand side via the I st um, Apple Store. You can also buy single editions if you want one particular issue for a single issue price. Um, what this particular application also does is allows integration to its own print subscriber database, which I'm not going to talk too much about today. It's available as part of our premium App Studio package, but we can integrate with that. So if you don't want to double charge customers, there's an ability to do some integration work to allow them to log into the application and then issues are available for free if they're already a print subscriber. Kind of worth mentioning, but um, I'll, I'll, there's a lot more detail to that and we'd be happy to answer your questions um, offline on that later. I'm going to load one of the issues. So once you've already downloaded an issue, it's available even if you're offline, it's, uh, it's a distinct bundle of content which is available and downloaded and then available offline. Um, you're seeing the, the standard menu bar appear there as I, as I load it. I haven't read this particular issue yet, so it's taking me to the front page. Um, and this particular issue does left-right navigation. You can also do vertical navigation if you want. So you can scroll up and down. Um, there's various ways to achieve that. Um, and as I navigate through, you can see these particular pages have uh, media embedded. There's um, pop-ups that, that are available as well. Um, uh, and and so on and let's just take you to a recipe example um, so this is a little like the recipe that we just saw in the web interface um, there is um, again a nice uh, colorful image and then I'm using the page flip which may not render well over WebEx to show the recipe information on the background um, they use pop-up quite nicely in this app as a way to be able to enlarge the instructions so that if you're cooking this particular recipe you don't have to squint at the screen if you've got um, food all over your hands as you're preparing something you can kind of enlarge it all and then flip through it really easily to be able to follow along a nice intuitive use, use of the pop-up there so um, all this stuff is uh, using native text so it's selectable and that means that you can um, in the instance of this application they've included a glossary so if you don't know what quinoa is or something you can look it up um, and it's available to you in that way. Um, so let's see if I can select something here. Uh, it's not coming across on the screen. So um, again, if you would like to go ahead, I think there's some free issues of good food that you can download and play with to get a good feel of that. Let's show you uh, another quick example. Uh, in this case, we're gonna show you uh, the Ford application. This is much more of a marketing driven application. So it's a free app to download and then all of the issues are free also, um, I'm looking at the latest issue, and um, I've gone towards the end of the issue where, um, so I'm right towards the end of the issue where they have uh, a number of different models of car. And this is, I guess, another great uh, way to use um, some of the functionality I showed you earlier on and to be able to allow users to change car color to get a good feel for what particular color they want to go purchase. Um, you can tap for videos. Videos can be either embedded into the issue or they can be linked to a video server somewhere, as I showed you within Quark Express. Also is available within InDesign, but um, importantly, in terms of a design consideration for user experience is um, how, how big do you want the issue to be that the user has to download? If you, in, if you embed a lot of video, it's gonna really make that issue size quite large. And that can be quite frustrating for users. Um, and we feel like the best apps have a blend, a couple of videos that are embedded and then um, a lot more that are linked out to and are only available online. Users, I think, kind of appreciate that more. Um, let me just also show you the custom font that I mentioned earlier on. So if we just go to a, a page that has some text in it, this is all um, selectable native text in the app that can be searched through as we mentioned or copied or do, done whatever you want to do with it but it's all using the Ford antenna font so obviously Ford has the license to distribute that so it gets bundled in and then um, is rendering the, the fonts within the application um, so that's the Ford application again that's a free one so definitely encourage you to go check that out and then finally let's just uh, quickly look at Stuff Magazine Everything I've shown you so far is actually available in both orientations. The um, design teams at 
Good Food and uh, at Ford uh, have decided that they want to be able to show the content in whatever orientation you decide to hold your device in. Stuff Magazine is vertical only, and um, I'm just going to flip my device so I can show you that in vertical layout. And let me just scale it back a little bit. Here we go. Um, so this magazine is quite innovative also in terms of the way that it uses some of the features that are standard. So as I swipe through, they're using uh, horizontal navigation, but certain pages will also utilize vertical navigation as well, which is quite nice. And further, they do some interesting things around um, uh, uncovering pages. So it's not just a, a full swipe, it's an uncovered swipe, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, but first, this is an advertisement that's within the um, within the magazine, and this is actually using the 360 product um, functionality that I uh, showed you within InDesign. And it, it's done it in a nice way in that it just automatically um, revolved the car around and then did something nice with the, with the text, but I can actually um, run my finger over it, and I'm not sure how well that renders uh, across Web WebEx, but I can actually physically control the car and the text and just makes it a little bit more interactive, which makes the advertising element more um, more uh, valuable, really. So you just saw the expose page turn, um, which is quite nice. Um, and they use things like vertical navigation and pop-ups pretty nicely to show product demonstrations and information. This is quite a nice feature I like where they're showing the Nook HD and then it flips to show the standard, uh, a different uh, model of Nook HD, which is quite nice and uses um, pop-ups effectively to um, to be able to dis display different information as you navigate around. Really nice implementation. Um, they do some really nice features um, with this, which makes it really nice. And this is an element I'm just going to, I just quite like the design um, element on the page here is is while every page is uh, navigated horizontally, what they've done here is um, they let you swipe vertically, but only a little bit, and it just kind of exposes a little extra piece of information. So it really encourages the user to explore the content using the touchscreen as opposed to just presenting a very flat, dull experience, which is really nice. Okay, so those are a few of the uh, applications. And um, just to give you a bit more information, um, one of the good things you can do is visit the uh, appstudio.net website where you'll find um, a bunch of information actually about um, the product itself, um, also where you can access the free trial from, um, what you can do in terms of um, plans and sign up, which we'll talk about in a second, but also you can um, get a list of all of the clients that are currently using App Studio. Um, it has direct links to the iTunes store or the Android store and um, where it lets you have a, um, a direct download there to the application so you can uh, install those apps, um, get a good feel for what people are using in terms of interactivity in their publications, how they're designing things, um, how they're handling different orientations and all the things we just described. Um, you can just try those out on your dev device and that's a really good way to get a feel for um, how you could potentially be using App Studio with, uh, with your work. Um, so Let's talk quickly about pricing just to finish up. And um, to do that, I'm just going to jump back into PowerPoint. Um, as I just mentioned, the trial is available for free. Uh, it's a 30-day trial. You can pretty much take take care of anything you want to do in uh, regards to App Studio. So you're able to um, create and upload any kind of content that you want to produce in either Quark Express or InDesign. You can um, compile that content, you can manage it using the web interface I showed you. And then using the test button um, I mentioned earlier, you can push an issue to test and then use the free application that's available from, for download from the App Store, the App Studio application, to preview that content on the device. So you're effectively able to go through the whole workflow process and then view things on the device to get a really good feel for that. Um, the only thing you can't do is generate an app, build your own app in uh, your own branded application, but um, everything else is available to you, so you get a really good feel for what you can achieve using App Studio to create your content. Um, so I definitely encourage everyone to go sign up and, and give that a go. 
using the trial and the help files that I uh, pointed out earlier on on the docs.appstudio.net site. It's a really good way to get going, um, uh, so I encourage you all to, to give that a go. Once you've built something and uh, you may be thinking about taking it to market, you have a few choices around the different packaging that we offer. So just to briefly touch these, as I said, all this information is available on the website, but um, you can start as low as $199.95 for um, a full single edition app as a one-off fee, um, all the way through to Enterprise, um, where you can do a lot more custom and uh, automated things with App Studio. But just briefly touching on all four of the different packages we have, single edition is really in, uh, intended for the non-issue based publication. So think of it more as a one-off kind of book publication, like a cookbook or something you're looking to produce. Um, that's just a recipe book or, uh, or whatever that uh, is never going to be updated. There's never going to be a second issue of it. You can actually build all that in App Studio, create the app, sell it on the App Store, and that's going to be $199.95 all in. Um, if you want to sell more issue-based products, um, you can start for as low as $99.95 a month. Um, that lets you have like a newsstand-based product or an app um, product if you wanted to have a standalone app, which is capable of receiving issues so you can publish frequently to the to your uh, readership. Um, it's, a, it's available across a broad range of devices and includes a thousand issues per month, which you can add to using one of our issue bundles. Um, or if you wanted to go a little more premium, um, the premium multi-issue package offers all that, it has a broader, broader device support range and also uh, allows you to connect to your subscriber database if you already have a print readership that you want to offer the issues through for free. So you can let them log in and download things without having to pay twice for um, content, which is always a good thing. Um, that also includes a, a larger volume of issues available per month. And then finally, um, Enterprise, uh, just briefly to touch on it, it covers a number of things that we haven't talked about today, things like XML automation, maybe custom features you want to add to the application itself. Uh, and that might be relevant to what you're doing. A lot of our journal customers uh, use the XML automation, for example, but maybe also it could apply to you if you have a large volume of publications. So maybe you uh, publish 30, uh, 30 publications that are published only twice a year. Um, Sometimes the, we can work the enterprise pricing so that it, um, when you do volumes like that in terms of the number of apps that are going to be available, there's, there's ways to do that that can be more cost effective and can scale more appropriately. Um, so uh, that's a good reason to talk to us about that. Um, and then also I'll just mention that if you're already using Quark Enterprise Solutions, they, there's a, an ability to tie in App Studio to that quite nicely. Um, so it scales both in terms of price and also in terms of the integration point to the enterprise solutions. Um, and just one last thing, across all those packages, um, single, pro, and premium, those prices include bronze support. So that's all in. There's no additional hidden fees. Um, we also we do also have silver and gold support that are available for an extra fee. And you know, take take a look at those on the website. And when you go to make that decision, we can help you choose a support package that's appropriate for you, depending on um, how much support you'd like to have from us as you uh, as you go through the exercise of building your app. Um, so yeah, th those are things are available right now. Um, in terms of the requirements um, from the types of um, desktop publishing you're using, or whether you want to use HTML5 or XML. Quark Express 9.5 or higher will support any of the plans. If you want to use uh, InDesign, you can use CS5 or higher. Um, obviously, InDesign is currently at CS6 at the time of this webinar, but um, we actually support back to CS5, which is a really nice feature if you don't want to upgrade InDesign. Um, uh, that does require a premium um, or above plan. If you want to use HTML5, that's similar. You need a premium or above plan but then you can do some really uh, cool things with HTML5 uh, embedded into the uh, content of your application. And then XML needs enterprise because of the customizations required to re receive any XML formats you might be using. So uh, th those are the kind of the prerequisites. Um, uh, and uh, if you need some more information on those or you want to talk those through with us, please, please feel free to do so. And on that note, uh, any questions, feel free to contact me directly. There are other contact um, 
information points that are available through the WebEx that you're viewing right now. Um, if you would like to reach out through any of those channels, feel free to do so. They'll filter those requests either to me or somebody else that can answer those questions. And um, we, we'll get back to you with any any uh, any information that you may need in terms of the product or the commercial pricing. Um, we can we can answer any questions that you may have. So finally, just want to say thanks for uh, your time today. Uh, we got through everything in uh, a little under an hour, which is great. And um, uh, again, any questions, let us know. And uh, thanks for your time. And I uh, hope you uh, get the opportunity to download App Studio, give it a try, and we'd love to have your feedback. So we look forward to that. And thanks again.